unfortunately for New Yorkers, this wasn't the only story yesterday. I mean, you're also reading about somebody else who got stabbed on a New York City subway, somebody else who got slashed in the East Village. I and mean, this is day after day after day. And there are a lot of parents, there are a lot of families dealing with this reality of rising crime in New York. For us, uh, fortunately, my daughters knew exactly how to respond. Um, but listen, they were just sitting there at the, at the kitchen table doing homework and bullets are started going off all around them. And we don't live in, you know, some huge house with, uh, you know, this isn't a gated community. Uh, th this was something that happened really just feet from where they were sitting. Yeah. Mm. Congressman and New York gubernatorial candidate Lee Zeldin calls out rising crime in New York. As two teenagers are injured in a drive-by shooting outside his Long Island home, where his two daughters were doing homework. Sean Annity joins us right now with live reaction on this Columbus Day. Sean, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, guys. How are you? Good. We're, we're doing okay, but, you know, it, it sounds like the cops said, well, you know, it, this was targeted. It was apparently a, a gang thing. That doesn't make me feel better. You, you look at the <laughs> Chicago numbers, it's all gang-related. And those, those things, those crime stats look like zip codes. Well, you have all of these crimes happening. The, it, it's interesting to watch the Democratic Party. Joe Biden said we're going to we're going to give more money to the police, but whether he likes it or not, the Democratic Party is the party of defund, dismantle, and these crazy and say no bail laws. Uh, Steve, since 2009, on on this network, on on my TV show, I've been scrolling the names that people never read about, never hear about. Yep. Uh, people shot and shot and killed in Chicago. Uh, you've got crime. It, it is so bad. It is so out of control. Basically, cops are afraid to do their job. They cut a billion dollars out of the New York Police Department budget. Uh, now this happens in front of Lee Zeldin's home. I, I mean, where he lives in Long Island is very similar to where Brian Kilmeade lives in Long Island. It's, uh, it's happening everywhere. The, the, uh, my favorite is you had one bank robber gets caught robbing a bank, uh, no bail law, gets out, robs another bank, gets out again, robs another yeah. bank. I think he robbed five banks in total. But it's really the violent crime that is top of mind for most voters. We got an, an election in 29 days. Uh, inflation's at a 41 year high. We have record high gas prices, wide open borders. You, it, you cannot pursue happiness in this country if you don't have law and order and safety and security. Uh, this is every small town, every big city all across the country. And I, I would argue all of these wide open borders, it's, it's all gonna play a part. Uh, whether this turns into the wave election, some are predicting, I'm not willing to go there. Uh, we'll, we'll see, but if Republicans have a wave election win, law and order is definitely going to be a big part of it. Oh, mm -hmm. it certainly is. And, you know, I was, when it comes to this crime issue, I was just at a drugstore in New York City and somebody walked in, they stole all the baby formula, all the diapers, and then they walked yeah. out of the store. And then I heard one of the employees say, you know, the guy didn't even run out of the store. He just waited for the bus <laughs> with his ba bag of stolen <laughs> he didn't stuff. Run, he didn't run away. No, he just yeah. stayed there. That's how Why? emboldened uh -huh. criminals are right now. And it is a huge topic of conversation, Sean, as you know, everybody in New York feels less safe because crime is so random. One of those people is former governor of New York, David Patterson, Crazy. Democrat. Listen to what he has to say. The first time in my life, even in the late 80s and 90s, when the crime rate was killing 2,000 people uh, uh, a year, I never felt as unsafe as I do now just walking around. And God forbid, uh, sometimes we take the subway home from uh, WABC and uh, you're hearing about an assault on the subway almost every other day. Yeah. Sean, crime doesn't care about yeah. your, or your political affiliation. It, look, Governor Patterson is a Democrat and pretty left wing, and he's recognizing the obvious. What's, am what's amazing this year that I don't think we've ever seen before, when you look at gubernatorial candidates around the country that are Democrats, you know, they, they, they thought, for example, the Dobbs decision would give them a, a leg up in terms of getting their base motivated. But then they start taking this radical extreme position that abortion should be allowed up until the moment of birth. 
I, I, I don't know any Democrat or any anybody that I know that says they're pro-choice that takes that radical position. But you have pe the the, the uh, gubernatorial Democratic candidate in Arizona took the position yesterday. Stacey Abrams has no idea about science and when the, a heartbeat begins. Uh, wouldn't give a definition. Guys like John Fetterman in the Senate, running for Senate, Mandela Barnes, Raphael Warnock, you know, no restrictions at all whatsoever on abortion. That will be on the ballot, I think, as well. But Patterson was right. I mean, we have more more examples than we've ever had before right. of commuters in New York. They go in the subway system and they're being thrown right in front of trains, yeah. and, and some of them sadly are dying. And and people see it and. You know, if you don't feel safe and secure, you, you cannot live your life, period, end of sentence. That becomes a quality of life issue. When you have record high inflation and you add that to record high gas prices and the average household is paying an extra, on average, according to the Heritage Foundation, $7,200 a year uh, for the very same items they purchased when Donald Trump was president, uh, that's going to have an impact at the polls whether it's picked up by pollsters or not. Right. Uh, press not helping. Uh, Newsday, the hometown paper in Long Island, front page, boosters. Uh, he's on page 10. <laughs> New York Post, front page, big story. He also, uh, uh, Governor Hochul, has just promoted Joshua Norkin. He's really the main, uh, he's the genius behind the zero cash bail. She, he just got yeah. a promotion to deputy counsel. So she does not care about crime, no interest in debating. She feels as though she's going to run out the clock, and that's a bad sign. Well, Brian, what you're, what you're saying is happening all around the country is almost every Democratic gubernatorial, senatorial candidate has taken on the same strategy. It's, it's kind of like Biden in, in, in 2020. Hide in the bunker, yep. hide from bad the press. Sign. Uh, don't agree to debates. Don't answer any questions. The media is compliant. If they ask you a question, it's going to be a softball anyway. And hope you can run out the clock. And right. if you do agree to debate, you're going to do it like, for example, John Fetterman in Pennsylvania the week before the election. Um, and you, he wants a teleprompter sure. and closed captioning. So uh, Catholic, uh, Governor Hochul's strategy is she wants to go on a state listening tour. Uh, Governor, you don't need to listen. What you need to do is open up a newspaper, like Brian said, maybe not Newsday or the Daily News uh, or the New York Times, open up the Wall Street Journal or the New York Post, and you can see what is happening every day. People are not right. safe and secure. Right. Look, we're setting record after record in terms of murders, violent crime, carjackings in, in almost every big city in the country. The, the red states that do support law enforcement, and, and I know that Governor DeSantis got hit on this, he's saying, remember, we're a Second Amendment state. Right. Our, the people of Florida have the right to defend themselves. I interviewed, I see the video you're running right now, I interviewed this woman. She's probably going to lose at least one oh. eye. She may lose sight in both eyes no. as a result of that random beating in a subway in, in, in New York City. Right. This has got to stop. Government's exactly. number one role is safety and security. It's got to be about law and order. Sure. And, and I don't care if it's law and order at the border. We can't aid and abet law breaking. We have a president that's involved in human trafficking, and then he gets upset when, okay, some governors say, well, we're not right. a sanctuary state. We'll send them to Martha's Vineyard, D.C., New York City, or uh, out to Gavin Newsom in Florida, who's dying to be governor. There you go. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.